Water enters the following pipe segment at point A at 1 CFS. Find the diameter of the second sewer. So over here is the given pipe network. Here is point A. This is the flow rate through it. And we are tasked with finding the diameter of sewer number two, which is going to be down here. Sewer one will be at the top. We can also see that we've been given a number of other pieces of information about each sewer, namely the Moody friction factor, the velocity, and the pipe length. So because this problem gives us a Moody friction factor, normally I would start by taking a look at the equation on page 313, which is where we would get to if we searched for Moody. This would give us the head loss equation showing that the Moody friction factor times length of the pipe over the diameter of the pipe times velocity squared over 2g equals the head loss. However, this problem is a pipe network. And more importantly, this problem requires us to know that in a pipe network, head losses are the same in each pipe. And therefore, we can set this equation equal to itself with one side representing each pipe. Page 341 of the manual actually calls this out and gives us our starting point for the problem. So if you see a parallel pipe or a pipe network on the exam, remember that this might be the page to go to. So let's start by filling out the equations listed on page 341 for the parallel pipe. The first thing it shows is that the head loss total equals FA times length a times diameter a times velocity a over 2g equals fb we can think of a and b in terms of 1 and 2 here equals lb over db times vb squared over 2g So let's start by filling out this equation. We have FA here equals 0 0.022. Length of A is going to be 2,000 feet. The diameter is what we're searching for. Let's call that D1 instead of A. It's just easier for me. Um, the velocity is 3 feet per second squared over 2 times 32.2 feet squared per second equals 0 0.019 times 3,000 feet of the second pipe length over D2, which is the diameter, times 2.75 feet per second squared over 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared. Oops, that should have been feet per second squared as well. Okay, so filling out this equation, we can see that we are missing pipe diameter on both sides. Therefore, we can solve for one of the unknown pipe sizes in terms of the other pipe size. So let's solve for D1. So if we start to fill out this equation here, or sorry, solve for this equation with all of our knowns, we can simplify this down to 6.15 over D1. And solving for the variables over here that we can solve for, will give us 6.7 over D2. If we rearrange these, we can say that D1 equals 6.15 D2 over 6.7, which gives us 0 0.92 D2 equals D1. 
So this is how we solve d1 in terms of d2. Next, we can solve the flow equation, which is the other equation given in page 341. So we can solve that equation in terms of d2 to find the diameter of the second pipe. So that was step one. And this equation right beneath it in the manual shows that pi d squared over four times v equals pi d a squared over four times v a plus pi d b squared over four times v b. In this case, a and b, same as one and two. And we already have our flow as one CFS here, so what we can write is one cubic feet per second equals, and we're going to replace, this is D1, this is D2. We're going to replace D1 over here with D2 instead to have one variable here to solve for. So this is going to be pi times 0 0.92 d2 and that whole quantity will be squared over 4 times our velocity of 3 feet per second plus pi d2 squared that one's just by itself over 4 times 2.75 feet per second. And if we solve this out a little bit more, we can see that pi times the square of 0.92 divided by four will give us 1.99 d2 squared plus, a little simpler over here, pi divided by four times 2.75, gives us 2.16 d2 squared. And so finally we have one cubic feet per second equals 4.15 d2 squared. And Solving for D2 here gives us a final answer of 0 0.49 feet. And since we were asked to find the diameter of the second sewer, half a foot equals six inches. And that's all it takes to solve this problem. However, I, I will note that this problem takes a very long time to solve. So even if you're writing quickly, it'll probably take you more than six minutes. Remember that this is okay since there will be other problems on the PE that you will be able to solve in less time. Other things this problem could have asked you to solve for instead would have been either the velocity of the pipe, if diameter was provided, or the length of the pipe. Personally, I think the hardest part of this problem is thinking about solving for one unknown in terms of the other. But now that you've seen this concept, it should be easier to recall if you come across this problem on the exam again. So keep it in mind, do it a few times, try to get it into your brain. But really these two steps, which are called out in page 341, are all you need to solve it. So that's it.